So instead of showing you unboxing the Pro Station, I'm going to show you some of the what I feel are the important aspects of this charger because supposedly it draws a continuous 80 amps, which is an astronomical amount of current. So um, hopefully I'm going to show you things like, is your house even capable of drawing 80 continuous amps? You know, what kind of wire do you need to really do this? How far can you run it? Um, just a myriad of things like that. So hang in there. I'm going to go and try to get this thing unboxed because it just came in the door. I'm going to get some stuff started and then kind of explain what I did as I, um, this is, I got everything all set up and hopefully show you some of the current draws and, and if things get hot or not and like so today um i just finished up installing the ford pro charger and behind that big panel that i ended up making because after putting in the inch and a half liquid tight it looked pretty ugly in my office so i ended up building a box around it anyway as you can see the liquid tight goes up goes up in the ceiling goes all the way over and then down a wall and then out to the charger so um again i'm not going to go into super specifics on everything because everyone's install is going to be way different i do have um a 200 amp system and for the longest time i've got some 220 stuff i run like saws and welders and things and such um I would measure the current on both legs and one was always a little bit less and I realized what was going on because when I pulled this apart and I started to do my pro charger install um, I checked the two main lugs coming in and uh, off of the main breaker they're supposed to be at 200 inch pounds again everyone is different so don't think that 200 inch pounds is right for yours anyway so with that I took a torque wrench and I realized that one of them was at 200, the other one was at 100. So once I tightened that other one down to 200 and wiggled the copper, tightened it, tightened it, um, I ended up, the loads were perfectly balanced. So and as you noticed, all my 220 stuff is as close to the top. So um, there isn't a long run from the, the bar on up. So um, that's really all there is to go with that. Um, I did do some load testing and I'll go over that here in just a minute, but I'm gonna shut this up and... So I got the panel closed up, all set, everything's on. I have the uh, charger opened so I can do some amp meter testing to see how much it's going to draw. I got my lightning back from the dealer after I brought it in for some service. And now I'm going to go and um, plug it in and see uh, what kind of current it draws and see if uh, everything I did was up to par. Ooh, I heard the relays kick over in the charger. And it's on. So I gotta go and stop this for a bit and put the ammeter on and I'll be right back. So as you can see, well maybe not, you can see the uh Charger is slowly ramping up. We're at 20 amps and it's still going. And I'll test both legs here once uh, this thing actually kind of straightens itself out. I'm also going to go and take a, so a temperature probe and go and check the breakers to see if they're hot 
and any of the connections that I had going on there. So um, we're at like 56 amps and still climbing. Pretty wild. 61 amps. Yeah, so um, and 79 amps so this bad boy has drawn some major current let's see how well balanced the legs are okay 80.5 and 79.3 so that seems pretty good So I'm at the panel and I'm going to take uh, an initial meter reading and it's 69. I just powered up the charger. So I'll come back in a couple hours and take some more readings. As you can see, the entire panel is 64. That's 72. As you can see, it's starting to warm up, but again. So it's about 95, ones down below are 65, so about a 30 degree increase. I don't know if that's normal or not, but it doesn't seem overly excessive hot considering it's drawn 80 amps. So a couple items that you are going to need if you're going to try to do this yourself is you really need a, a VOM, an AC VOM, a digital voltmeter. We could use an analog, but this here does kind of everything. It's uh, an inductive amp meter, and it's a voltmeter of all kinds of DC, AC. It does all kinds of things. So um, that's really all you should need for testing your circuits out. And you'll see those in the video that I did while I am checking the current going to the uh, charger. So another thing you're going to really need, and some people may laugh at this, you're going to need a torque wrench. And this is an inch torque wrench. And um, basically it goes from like 20 inch pounds up to I think maybe 600. I'm not for sure. Anyway, um, but I can't stress this enough. Um, you really need to torque all of your settings right. And you think you're going to be able to do that with like a regular screwdriver. You are not. It's just, it's just uh, not going to happen. So, and for me, because I wanted to check um, my mains coming in, I bought a couple of these. I bought a three eighths uh, and a quarter inch. Uh, these are basically insulators. So when you're working something live um, or have to work live, in my case, the mains coming in, unless you talk to your utility company and have them pull your socket, you are not going to be able to do that uh, dead. So anyway, um, I looked for days for something like this. Maybe I just was calling it wrong. I don't know. I I I found some that were as much as $300. These I happen to come across at Lowe's. I think the quarter was 10 and the uh, three ace was maybe like 13 or 14. Not for sure the exact cost, but they were a lifesaver because again, you can work on circuits hot if you so desire to. Uh, everything other than my mains, I worked dead. So, um, and that's what I would suggest anyway. I will put uh, in the comments down below, hopefully they still have these, um, Lowe's, Amazon, and the amp meter, I believe were Amazon. So anyway, um, we'll kind of go over, I'm just going to quick, not quick, I'm going to go over all of the other things that will be common to most of the installs to the Pro Charger. See you in a bit. So I wanted to just 
do a quick follow-up to the video and run through some of the stuff I went over in the video. Hopefully the audio is good. If not, hopefully everything in the video will be brought up in my little notes afterwards. I'm going to cheat and I'm going to use my notes that I took. So, um, so my main run from inside the house to the garage was 40 plus feet. And I used a three gauge uh, that was rated at 194 degrees Fahrenheit. And that is exactly what uh, Ford spec'd out. Um, they didn't spec the length in anything that I could find. So I kind of just followed the uh, electrical specification guidelines. Um, and this is kind of why I didn't go into great detail on my install because everyone's install is going to be different. I mean, your main panel may be right next to where you're going to install your um, Pro Charger. So mine was quite a ways away, so it added some other uh, difficulties to the install. So um, anyway, um, in the video, hopefully I brought up some very important parts on the commonalities in all of the Pro Charger installs, whether you're going to be doing this yourself or, or trying to do it yourself or having a professional install. This stuff is kind of new. I don't know of any other EV chargers out there that produce this kind of current today. Um, so even though you are going to hire an electrician that's certified, make sure that they have you know, done these before and they really read the instructions. So like I said, in the, in the video, torque settings are super important. Um, the uh, torque on the actual inside of the charger was 60 inch pounds. The torque on the ground was 35 inch pounds. And like I said, on your breakers, depending on whose breaker you use, that can be all different and the gauge of wire you use. So, and one other thing, over torquing is bad too. So if you think, oh, I'm just gonna put a big wrench on there and crank it down, that's also bad. There's a reason why it's in inch pounds and they're very specific. So um, anyway, beyond that, uh, if you have an EV, an extended range battery, you will be getting a Pro Charger. At least this year, they come with the vehicle. Um, and you can adjust internally. There's up on the upper left corner inside the Pro Charger, there's a little white current settings switch from like zero to or one to nine. They only go up to seven. Seven is 80 amps and it goes all the way down to 12 amps. So you can actually set this and limit the current. If you don't have the capacity in your breaker box, you can set this to as little as 12 amps. Granted, you're gonna be charging way slower, but at least if in the future you are able to upgrade your panel or whatever, you can also, you already have the Pro Charger mounted, and if you have the correct wire, you can crank up the current until you have as much current as your situation, application, home will provide. Um, you know, I had a 200 amp panel um, and, and what I did to make sure I had enough capacity, even though I figured I probably did, um, I pretty much turned every light, every appliance, everything in the house. Now I don't have, I have gas dryer uh, and uh, oven and things like that, hot water heater. Um, but I turned on, you know, I've got a hot tub. I turned on my welder and the air conditioner and a saw. And um, I put them under a load to make sure that they were drawing maximum current. My entire house, once I put a, uh, an inductive ammeter on, my mains coming in, I was drawing 37.4 amps. So in my head, I had more than enough capacity to run my 80 amp charger. And by the way, it's been running now for a few days. 
uh, at 80 amps. Um, in the videos, I showed after four hours how things got warm. So also the inside of the charger was the same temperature. So it's going to get warm. 80 amps, it's going to get warm, but it never, ever got hot. It was, it was, I could always touch it and I, you know, was very comfortable with the temperature. So, um, oh, let's see what else. Uh, um, I think that's probably it. Again, hopefully I covered most everything that would be common to most installs for the Pro Charger. Um, I kind of did this video because I didn't really see anyone doing a DIY on this. And I thought, someone's got to be able to do this. I, this is not rocket science, right? So um, that's why I produce this video. If, if you're going to hire an electrician, you know, the, the few things that you learned in here from about the torque settings and all that, if they're not torquing the connections, I would be very worried if they have done one of these before or done any EVs before. So that's one of the most important things. I can't stress that enough. So anyway, um, hopefully this video helped. Uh, like I said, I'm going to put um, where I purchased the uh, devices that I really felt I needed to make this install work. I'm not for sure exactly how much I, I, it cost me all in all. I know it's a lot less than having an electrician come out. So um, with that being said, if you have questions, um, you know, shoot me a text below and I will try to get back to you. And if I can't answer it, I'll honestly tell you I can't answer it because I'm just a knuckle dragger. I, I'm not um, this brilliant person. I'm just someone who likes to save money doing projects himself as long as they're done the right way. Thanks. It's been several weeks after installing my Charge Station Pro, and I decided to do a little more heat testing with a more accurate probe. And what I found running at the full 80 amps. The breaker was heating up to about 130 degrees, and that I thought was way too hot. So I lowered the amperage down to 64 amps, that was in the actual FCSP in the garage, and now the breaker is running at 110 degrees, which I think is, is, is a pretty safe temp. So not for sure if the contactors inside the breaker or the bus bar or a combination of both, but now they are what I feel running at a safe temp. The three gauge wire at 40 feet long was not even warm to the touch, so that is all good. I kind of wish I would have not put in a sub panel, as now I'm thinking that is just one more area for failure. And that's my old temperature probe, and the new probe is way more accurate. Anyway, hope this video was of some help to either decide to install the Charge Station Pro yourself or have a professional install it. Enjoy your new lightning.